Hi, everyone. I hope you're all doing well. Gabriel Crossway, superintendent for the Linwood Unified School District. I felt it was important for me as a superintendent to make a video to share with our community because there are a lot of concerns and questions right now regarding negotiations, as well as our district budget and finances. And although I am not a part of negotiations, as a superintendent, I feel it's my duty and obligation to be able to address some of these questions and concerns. I have a brief presentation for you. I'm gonna show this slide here. And go to the next slide here, excuse me. So again, as I mentioned earlier, I'm not a part of negotiations. The Linwood Teachers Association has their negotiations team. And as a school district, we have our own negotiations team. And I wanna again, clarify our challenges and be able to provide you with an update regarding our budget, negotiations and next steps. And I'm hoping that through our good faith efforts, we'll be able to address some of your questions and concerns along the way. So here, as you can see in this presentation, our teachers association and our school district team has met about seven times this year. We started negotiations in November of 2022. We have reached agreement on seven different articles, which means we have come to an agreement on different issues or concerns related to the contract. What we have not reached an agreement on are our salary and health benefits. As a district, before today, we had offered 5% on schedule and 5% off schedule. And approximately, I mean, on average, our teachers approximately make about 90,000 a year on average. So that translates to about $4,500 extra a year plus the $4,500 one-time bonus. As of today, we have offered to our teachers association 7% on schedule and a 5% bonus. Now, I am not saying that we have an extra 2% to offer. However, we are offering an extra 2% for teachers to also provide some additional services to our students. This is the only way that we can offer anything beyond the 5%. And as you can see here, the Teachers Association is requesting 14% of our for negotiations. Here you can see the negotiation process or timeline. Do we continue negotiations? If neither side can come to an agreement, then we would declare an impasse. And then we would go through a third neutral party for mediation, fact finding, where they would, you know, see what the teachers association is requesting, look at our budget, and then try to help us come through to an agreement. What I wanted to emphasize is that all school districts right now are being challenged with budgets and finances due to enrollment and attendance. About 74% of our budget goes to staff salaries and benefits. Almost 75%, three fourths of our budget goes to personnel. And because enrollment continues to decline in LA County, affecting Linwood Unified as well. This means that we have less students in our schools and in our district. And because we have less students, we receive less funds from the state of California. However, on top of the lower enrollment that we have experienced, we also have the lowest attendance rates that I have ever seen in my 25 plus years in education. Prior to the COVID pandemic, in 2019, our attendance rates are averaging, we're averaging about 96%. Currently, we're about 89%, close to 90%. And for every percent, it's about $1 million less for the school district. And so it's critical that every student come to school on a regular basis and that we're all mindful of our attendance because less attendance means less money for our employees. 
continuing with this presentation, I want to share with you that, again, our, our teachers are making about 90000 and then on, on average, it's about 28000 um, a year on benefits. So that's about 118, 118000 a year, and that includes salary and benefits. And again, that's what we're paying as a district to the average teacher in Linwood Unified. For comparison, I'm going to give you some other examples of how that compares. Um, there's some questions about the work to rule. And what I want to share with you is that this is a tactic that unions will sometimes use to put additional pressure on systems and will say that they will only work during their work hours, their regular work hours, anything beyond, for example, from 8.30 or 8.45 to 3.30 at the elementary or from 8 to 3.30 at the secondary schools, that they will not do that. And that includes tutoring, after school support, sports, enrichment activities, credit recovery, Saturday school. And again, so those are just some of the examples regarding the work to rule. And as a district, we're respecting this. We're, we're respecting the union's decision to implement the work to rule, and that's their discretion. So here's what I wanted to just provide you with a comparison of, again, I think I said 118,000 for salary, for the average teacher salary and benefits. And there you can see what our salaries compare to other districts. So for example, on the first column, you see it's Linwood Unified, a, a teacher who starts with a bachelor's degree is or starting off about 55,000. And how does that compare to other districts? So to other unified districts, which means they're K through 12th grade districts, there's about 44 that submitted their data to LA County. That means we rank 14 out of 44. We're not in the top 10, but we're above the average. And then if you continue down this, you can see that if you have a bachelor's with 60 credits, that means you've continued to school, maybe got a master's and some other uh, coursework, even a doctorate, our average teacher there is making about 90,000 or they actually make about 90,000, a little bit over 90,000. The median salary for this range in LA County is 86,000. And so out of 32 districts who have submitted these data in Los Angeles County only, we rank six out of 32. And then you can see uh, the maximum after 20 years, and we do it within 20 years, other districts, take 25 or 30 years for a teacher to be able to max out. So again, with 20 years, it's 105,000, a little bit over 105,000. And it's ranked 16 out of 47 districts. And there you can see that I'm getting this information from the Los Angeles County Office of Education. And that's of as of June 30th, 2022. And again, so that's where I'm getting the information and it's also available to the public. And so, um, again, teachers are asking for 14%. And the reality is that we just don't have it. If it was up to me and I had the money, absolutely, I would give it to not only our teachers, but all of our classified employees, absolutely 100%. However, um, by us giving them 14%, it would be unethical on my part because I would be letting the district down. That would affect our students in, in multiple ways. It would affect our employees in many ways, and it would affect you, the community as well. And I wanna make very clear that if it was up to me, absolutely we would support all of our employees. All of our families are being squeeze right now with a higher cost and inflation as well as our employees and so for us to give 14 percent that would bankrupt linwood unified school district that would bankrupt the district because we would not be able to verify and provide evidence that we can pay our employees and our bills 
for the next three years. As a school district, I don't control the money that comes to our district. That comes from Sacramento, and it comes from you as the families at home through attendance. And however, if we cannot prove that we can pay our bills for the next three years, that would cause the district to go into bankruptcy and to be taken over by the county and the state. And that's the last thing that we want in our community. That would be known as what's called receivership when the county takes over. And if you look up California receivership of state public schools, you'll see that we have a, near, a neighboring school district that's under receivership. And that is Inglewood Unified. That would also mean that we would have to um, have layoffs. And that would affect our classified employees. It would affect our teachers. And it would mean that we would have higher class sizes in our schools. And that's not what we want for our community. And so, again, you can see here that approximately our teachers are earning about 1.5% more each year automatically when they move on our salary schedule. So that means if you're um, a second-year teacher, the next year automatically you get a pay raise, even without negotiations. If you're at year five, automatically you move up to year six, you get another raise. And separately from the health benefits, as a school district, we also have to make sure that we have the funds for all of our employees to have a retirement and that's their pension. And so you can see here on the presentation, it's about $18,000 aside from on average, the $118 that we're paying for every employee. So again, here you see the additional data regarding our teachers and their compensation, about 90,000 a year. Our work calendar is about 185 days out of the year. And so if we add two additional days, it gives them to about 2% more in salary. Um, and it would mean additional professional development for them and or additional days of service for all of our students. Um, our teachers work and get paid for six and a half hours a day. Anything that they do beyond that is compensated. And so again, in addition to their salaries, we pay our teachers about 57 50 an hour for any additional work. And that includes tutoring, after school, Saturday school. And so anything they do that gets compensated beyond their six and a half hours, they're paid. And again, our, our proposal before today was 5%. And again, this is coming out of our unrestricted funds, which means goes about 4,500 plus a 5% bonus another 4,500, so about $9,000 for this year alone. And again, I, I wanna um, just say that we uh, support our teachers 100%. And there's nothing that I wouldn't do for them. And I hope that in my 12 years as serving Lima Unified, you have seen and, and believe that Linwood is dear to my heart, that I care about Linwood. And not, not because of what I say, but because of what I've done. And I've never made my work about me. I've always made it about our, working for our students, our families, our employees, and always doing things in collaboration because that's really what I believe in, collaboration. And I hope that you saw that during the last few years when we had to shut down our schools. We provided PPE equipment. We did our best to provide devices and support our students and families and our employees. We fed the community. We did whatever we could to make sure that our doors were open so that if you had any questions, you can stop by and visit our schools. And we didn't do that because we had to. We did that because we, we felt that that was the right thing to do. And I know in my heart, this is also the right thing to do. I know there's been a lot of questions about consultants and, and what does that mean to have consultants working in a district? So I'll tell you is we have our employees who go to 
presentations, conferences, anytime any of them get reimbursed or the district writes out a check to someone, they're a consultant. So when we pay our bills to our electric company, that's a consultant. If we do any work on our roofing construction, if we hire someone for professional development for our teachers, those are consultants. So what the Teachers Association is putting together is all items under our budget, under one section and calling them consultants. And so as a district, we have 21 million in this section under unrestricted funds. But here's what I wanna make sure that you understand. Of those dollars, we have to put aside for all of our bills, utilities, insurance, all those things. But about 11 million belong to students. And those funds should be used and are required to be used by school districts to provide direct services for students and families. So when we do things during the summer, after school, credit recovery, on Saturdays, those monies belong to our students. And if teachers want to use or have some of those funds, they also have to do the work. I can't just give them the money on salary. They have to provide a service for it. And that's a requirement. And it's not my rule right there. So again, of the remaining about approximately 10 million, here are some of the examples that we use with those funds. So just like your electricity has gone up, our electricity has gone up. And I know that there was a question that said, oh, your you know, consultants and your fees have gone up a lot in the last three years. Yes, just like they have for you at home, all of our fees, because remember, we didn't have students here three years ago. Our schools were shut down. And so the electricity, gas, and other utilities, we didn't have the same fees like we do now. We have almost all of our kids coming back on our, um, you know, back to school, except for some virtual students. But again, we have 1.4 million for insurance. Our copier machines weren't being used three years ago. They're being used a lot now. And then we have phone services, trash. And again, this is just an example for you to be aware of, of, of what does it mean to have consultants? Well, we as a district have to pay bills. We have a lot of properties that we have to maintain, water, make sure that they're running and operating with electricity and gas. And so we also have to pay our bills. Um, let's go on to the next slide. So again, I've mentioned this already. We cannot afford 14% raise that would bankrupt the district. So I'm gonna try to briefly explain this again. So as I mentioned earlier, we have to demonstrate in our budget that we have we can pay our bills and the employees for the next three years. So there you see approximately our revenue for each of the next three years. And we don't know what's gonna happen with the state budget right now. I know there's been some layoffs in the tech industry and even in the service industry. And I don't know, I can't predict the future, but we're anticipating that this will be our revenues. And then we have our expenditures. And if we included in the expenditures, the additional 14%, it's not just 14% for 22, 23. It's 14% for the year one, 22, 23. For year two, it becomes $28,000 approximately or 28%. And then you can see that it becomes 36%. So we would have to be able to demonstrate that we can pay 36% more on our expenditures over the next three years. And if you can see in, on, in the second or third column there for 23, 24, we're in the red by 11 million. And then the following year, we would be in the red by about 23 million. And that's what I'm talking about when we say that that would bankrupt the district and force the district to institute other measures like layoffs that would impact kids and families as well as our employees, but also it would risk us becoming under the state, under receivership, where we would have no control over when we unified. And again, I wanna emphasize that the 
5% ongoing out of our unrestricted funds is just affordable. And again, as of today, we are now offering 5% from our unrestricted funds and 2% from our restricted funds. And again, that would require the teachers to be willing to do two additional days, working from 185 days to 187 days. And, and then here, just the ongoing, the 5% going back to this, the 5% expenditures this year would be about $170 million budget in expenses. And then next year, $169 million. And the reason for that is because we have about 50 teachers who are taking the early retirement incentive. And so we're anticipating that we'll have some additional funds that we can use to pay our, our teachers through negotiations this year. And then you see for the 24-25, we would have to continue making budget cuts in order to stay and have a positive budget and demonstrate that we can pay our bills for the next three years. And then the last row that you see there is, um, is a requirement by the state of California. We have to demonstrate that we have at minimum 3% of our funds in reserve just in case of any emergencies. Um, and so that, again, and again, that's part of our presentation that we did earlier this year in our second interim budget. I also want to share this letter with you. This is the copy, and this is available for you if you want to just reach out to me. I know everybody has my phone number, has my salary, has uh, my email, but reach out to me. Talk to your principals. We'll be happy to provide you with this letter. So this is a letter that we received from the Los Angeles County Office of Education. And again, it's dated September of this school year. And I've shared this letter with our three associations. Uh, basically saying that for this year alone, we're projected to be deficit spending. That means we're spending more money than what we have. We're, and we cannot run on credit. We have to balance that out. And if this continues, it would increase to about $17 million for the 24-25 school year. Therefore, the county office is requesting that the district reduce funds and submit a plan to demonstrate what we're going to do to reduce these funds. And like I said earlier, one of the things that we've already done is we offered an early retirement incentive so that if we have any of our employees, teachers, CSCA or SCIU members who want to retire, they get an extra bonus this year. And at the same time, it avoids us um, having to do layoffs. And at the same time, it helps reduce our budget. Uh, just continuing here. So, you know, we, I'm going to, you can see this. I, I think I have one more slide here, but I, I want to just, let me stop sharing for a second here. I want to just emphasize here that we 100% value and care for our teachers. They are incredible. They do amazing things. And we wouldn't be where we are without them. So 100% support and value our dedicated teachers. I know there's been some hard things that have been said, but again, I value and appreciate our teachers. They're doing amazing work. We are working really hard to give them the highest salary feasible without jeopardizing the financial stability of our district or the educational excellence of our students who are our number one priority. We've done some amazing things the last 12 years. And I want you to take a moment to think back to how things were 10, 12, 15 years ago. Our, our students are thriving. They believe in themselves. They have hope. And they're succeeding in so many different ways. And again, this would not be possible without our teachers. And I wanted to just, um, again, I'll put that there for you so to for everyone to hear that. Let me go back uh, to the presentation. I'm almost done here. So again, looking, looking to the future, we're committed to continuing our negotiations. We're adjusting our staff numbers 
to address the declining enrollment. And I'm hoping that you'll help us by making sure that students are going to school on a regular basis. We're reviewing all of our contracts, analyzing all of our programs, but at the end of the day, I want to make sure that we do everything possible to protect the programs and the services for our students, for our families, and then we provide continued support in terms of health insurance for our employees and competitive salaries. Failure to do this as a superintendent would be a you know, catastrophe for the Linwood community. Receivership, and you can look this up and learn more about what this means. It would mean also larger class sizes, potentially because of layoffs. And layoffs and larger class sizes would not be good for our employees and would not be good for our community. So again, I wanna thank you. I hope that this helps answer uh, some of the questions and concerns that have been out there. Um, I know that as a superintendent, you know, I wanna make sure that we get through this and that we're able to move forward and that we continue being uh, supportive of one another because when our teachers win, our students win. When our teachers win, our CSCA members win. And when SCA, S CSCA and LTA win, SCIU wins. I want to believe that all of us can win, but most importantly, that we always keep our students at the forefront of all of our decisions and that we continue doing what's best for them. Um, we've been again negotiating since November 2022, and we're going to continue negotiating on our side because we want to make sure that we're able to come back to the bargaining table and that we make responsible decisions for our district. And again, we are committed with meeting with our teachers union in good faith. And we are hopeful to come to an agreement that avoids further impacts, that further impacts any of our students and families who I know rely on our support, our tutoring, our meals, our programs, our services. You can always visit our website and get more information. And I'm going to... We're going to put that information out there for you as well. So again, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for listening in. I hope you found this helpful. Appreciate all of you. And again, if you want more information, don't hesitate to reach out to me or to your administrators. Thank you very much again for entrusting us with your children. We appreciate you.